I'll tell you what madness is. Madness is saying, let this disease rip. Let people die. Ah, those were the days. With the federal and state governments deep into the let it rip phase of the pandemic, the Victorian government stuck its head out in front of the pack on Friday, using the standard Friday news dump to push out a press release to announce the end of the pandemic declaration. I guess it does make sense. I mean, you don't need a pandemic declaration if your plan is to do absolutely nothing and pretend the problem has disappeared. Polling has probably told the Andrews government that pulling the pin on the declaration will play well in the outer metro electorates. And this is just another step in clearing the decks with an election just over six weeks away. But what does this actually mean? Well, for Victorians, from 11.59 on the 12th of October, Victorians will no longer be required to isolate after testing positive to COVID-19. There's no way to sugarcoat it. It's purely a political decision that makes no sense from a public health perspective. The virus is no less contagious or serious. It's exactly the same virus that's killed over 13,000 Australians so far this year. Not content with waving the white flag, the Victorian government have gone that one step further and removed the need for people to report a positive result at all. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before other states follow. In other words, we'll be flying absolutely blind. When the inevitable next wave hits, the canary down the coal mine will be the healthcare system and the number of triage tents out front of the hospitals. Remember, this is Victoria we're talking about. The state where the Premier was more than happy to roll this stuff out on a daily basis. Just because you want it to be over doesn't mean it is. It simply isn't. This is with us for a long time. That is, of course, when it was doing wonders for its popularity. Just stop and think for a second. What possible reason is there to justify removing the need for people to report a positive result? What is the benefit in doing this? What is the cost? In further reducing the reliability of available data, it's also reducing the ability for people to make informed, data-driven decisions. Perhaps that's the point. With an election not far off, we're well and truly into the pretend that it's over phase. Ignoring all data suggesting otherwise. I so desperately want this to be over that I'm going to pretend that it is. I'm yet to see the other states announce they'll be ditching the requirement to report a positive test. But if it hasn't happened already, it's probably only a matter of time. This is purely a political move that channels the spirit of Donald Trump. When you test, you have a case. When you test, you find something is wrong with people. If we didn't do any testing, we would have very few cases. With the end of mandatory isolation periods, there won't be too many governments keen on reporting the consequences of their decisions, particularly those governments with elections coming up. With the virus picking up steam again in the UK, the fact that Australian federal and state governments have seen fit to wind back all mitigations and remove another layer of transparency when it comes to reporting what's actually going on, we can probably assume that we'll see another wave hit the country around Christmas or New Year. The only way we'll know about it, though, is through reports of a stressed healthcare system and an increase in absenteeism in the workplace, by which time it's far too late to do much about it at all. Now, if you're one of those people that rightly criticised the New South Wales and Morrison governments for their mishandling of the pandemic, yet you're remaining silent as Albanese hides behind the same cloak of secrecy that Morrison did, and while Daniel Andrews performs the type of political backflips only the most rusted-on stands will defend, well, there's a word for that. Hypocrite. 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 Hypocrite.